Um, I'm curious to know what your experience was there. Did was it welcoming? Did did the home people welcome you in, and did they provide you with food and clothing or shelter or something? Well, see, what I was doing, I was trying to get into somebody. I mean, my, my, I felt that my mission in life was to, I mean, in Thailand at that time, was to get acquainted with, to try to resist the, the communists who were trying to take over, well, they were basically trying to take over the whole world. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was looking for the people who wanted to resist the communist takeover of the world. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I talked to people along the border, and they said that the only the only person in Laos who was really dedicated against the communists was, was uh, Ron Powell. So right. that's why I got acquainted with him. Right. Okay. I, I met him at the border and then he invited me to go with him into Laos. It sounds like at the time you were kind of like a one man team. I mean, it didn't seem like <laughs> you had anyone behind you. How did you get all these people to, you know, have your back? and? Uh, believe in the mission. You know, America. No, I think it was very fortunate. Then you know, be a good talker, <laughs> and, and if people believe you, right? I, I think they believe you because you're sincere. Yeah, genuine. You believe yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so if you, if, you, if you don't believe yourself, nobody else is going to. That's very true. <laughs> that is very true. So let's talk after the war. Um, right around 1974 uh, to 1975, when the U.S. De uh, decided to pull out of the Vietnam War and um, essentially ending this um, covert operation in Laos. Um, is that kind of around the same time when you left? No, I, I, I never really... Uh I mean, I stayed in close touch with all the people there. I, I didn't really, you know, I didn't go out and go back to the U.S. I stayed there. Oh, so you kind of stayed around for a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah? You reached out to the people oh, yeah, there? I, I, you know, because then I, I, I married a lady that uh, was from Thailand. Okay. And her, her, in fact, her brother is still, is still alive. He was, he eventually became the prime minister of Thailand. But see, if, if you go back to the early days in Thailand, the king was very intelligent. Mm -hmm. In fact, that he picked the best students and sent them to the, go to school in the U.S. Right, to get educated. And uh, as my brother-in-law went, they sent him to, you know, he, he, he wasn't from a rich family, but they were very intelligent. So the, the government sent him to go to MIT. Oh, wow. So he, and when he went back then, he became, uh, well, first he was, uh, he, he was, and when the, when the Thai government sent you, you had to be sponsored by some element. Right. So he was sponsored by the Air Force. Mm -hmm. So when he came back, he was supposed to work for the Air Force. But it wasn't long until he <clears throat> he went to work for the government. You know, and eventually he became the uh, prime minister of Thailand. Mm -hmm. And he's still alive. He still lives in, in Thailand. I, think, in fact, I, okay. I need to go over and see him before long. Okay. So once the war ended, um, the U.S. pulled out. Um, many of the Hmong people believed that there was a promise made. A promise that the U.S. would kind of take care of them, would protect them, um, would take them away from the aftermath of the war. Um, do you have any knowledge of what happened there? Why, why only, only those who were uh, only only those Hmong people who were upper um, in the ranking levels of the military kind of got that protection, but thousands of Hmong people lost well, their you lives. Know, but if you go back to what really happened, I, I was in Laos at the time, and when the U.S. Because of uh, the pressure of politics within the U.S., mm -hmm. the U.S. decided to, to pull out of, of uh, Vietnam, mm -hmm. which included Laos at right. that time. And when they decided to pull out, then the Americans all suddenly jumped in their airplanes and went home. So the people panicked, and they all the, the Hmong people, a great ma mass of the Hmong yep. people, just Swore. retreated to the border. Right. And they and. Uh, I was still there, and you know the U.S. government asked me, you know, what are we going to do with all these people? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, 
I, I said, you can't send them to Thailand. Mm -hmm. Thailand is always overcrowded, is already overcrowded with refugees. Mm -hmm. So you can't send them there. They said, yeah, these people don't speak English. They have no education. If we send them to the U.S., how would they get along? They get along fine. Because the one thing I know about the, the Hmong people, you know, if you look at the history of the world, mm -hmm. the the best people, the most aggressive people, the people who always were successful were the people who live on top of the mountain because they look down on everybody mm -hmm. and they believe they're superior. Right. And that's and that's the Moon people, that's what they are. So I think if you send them to the US They'll do well. They'll do well, yeah. Because, yeah, they don't have any education, but they're very bright. Mm -hmm. They learn very quickly. Mm -hmm. and that's why when I come up here and see how well all the moon have done, it makes me very proud <laughs> that, that I was right. That's right. It's always nice to be right. Yeah. Do you feel like at that time, uh, even though there was so much conflict in the U.S., um, political, political conflict over the war, that any of them raise in the air and listen to you, listen to that recommendation that you made? Well, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I went to I went to college at Texas A and M, and Texas A and M was, uh, was an excellent school to go to because it taught you practical things. So, you know, when you when you graduated from Texas A and M, when you went out the front door, you had a job already because it taught you very right. practical things. Right. My major was geology. Okay. You know, and geology is, you can't major in a better thing because what geology is, it's a study of the whole world, mm -hmm. the earth. Mm -hmm. So I think it prepares you to do a lot of different kind of jobs. So, right. You know, that's why I think, uh, I, that's why I think I was very successful in dealing with people anywhere in the yep, world. Anywhere in the world, right. Because I never felt superior to anybody. That's great. And I believed that I could uh, could help people <laughs> to attain what they wanted out of life. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I think that's. <laughs> that's <laughs> how did you all get here? <laughs> exactly. That's right. Right. Because <laughs> they asked me, <laughs> you know, when when the U.S. decided to pull out of all of Southeast Asia. So the, air, the Americans all jumped in their airplanes and flew away. Yeah. The, the Thai people all rushed yeah. to the border yeah. and just came across thousands of people came across the Thai border. Right? Yeah. But I was still over there, so they asked me, the U.S. government asked me, what, what can we do with all those people? I said, they can't go to Thailand because Thailand is already full of refugees. Mm -hmm. There's no place for them there. Mm -hmm. Do you feel they that? Said, well, so what we do? And I said, send them to the U.S. Yeah. Oh yeah, but they don't have any education. They can't speak English. What What are they going to do? Mm -hmm. I said, don't worry. These people are the most intelligent people I've ever met. Yeah, they don't have education, but that don't stop them from being intelligent. Mm -hmm. So I think when they get there, they will do extremely well. Right. Do you think that because the secret war was a covert operation? Yeah, but I think if you looked at the, the characteristics of the Hmong people, I believe they would adjust to life in the U.S. extremely rapidly. Mm -hmm. And I think if you look, that's why when I come up here and see what all they're doing now, right. Right. you know, yeah. you can tell I, it's always makes you feel good when you were right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? We really do praise you and do consider you as kind of the forefather, you and General Vang Pao, to pave that way for us, to give these opportunities to us and to kind of um, yeah. allow us to come to a, um, a country where we are free. So we really do appreciate you for that. And for you to believe that, you know, even a small minority people who don't know how to read and write are still intelligent enough oh, to survive. No. If that has nothing to do with intelligence. And intelligence means the ability to learn. Mm -hmm. So wherever you go, whatever the conditions, you very quickly learn yeah. how to, how to uh, survive in the new environment and make the best of it. Mm -hmm. 